Hey guys, welcome to the tour. This is our farm, Honey Tree Farm. Oh, we're up front here. This is plot two and plot one. So in tunnel two here is where we have cauliflower and what's left of the turmeric after the freeze last night. We also have head lettuce in there. We have uh, Nancy and a, a bib variety called Kegelowane. And then on this side, we have red beets. This is tunnel one. So this is the first plot that we built here when we started building everything. And this year, this is where we grew the ginger. So this was mostly full of ginger and some peas. And then after we took the ginger out, we had salad in here. And then now it's fennel and radish and some head lettuce as we go into winter. And as you've probably heard, we're next to the road. So our farm's on a pretty busy road and we're in a pretty normal country setting for this area. We're in North Carolina. Okay, this is plot three, but we've got carrots and beets in here. So sugar snap or sugar snacks, carrots, red ace beets and touchstone gold beets. Beets are pretty cold hardy, so they'll grow well into the winter for us here. In this tunnel, this is where we grew um, cucumbers this year, where we did tomatoes last year. We've got celery, salad. These are Nancy, um, like butter head lettuces, and then Napa cabbage. Here is plot four. We've got more beets, sugar snap peas, this actually blew over. We just had the hurricane remnants come through. Um, so half of the stratless blew over, but it survived the cold last night and we're gonna be putting this back up tomorrow during the rain. It should be fine. We also have broccoli here and more red beets. One thing we figured out this year is we never really had enough succession of beets. We saw a lot of them. Even though all this is covered, there's head lettuce in here kohlrabi this is fennel these are some radicchios we're hitting a pretty rough cold snap right now so we're just gonna leave everything covered for probably about 10 days until our lows are like above 37 degrees so here's tunnel five we have swiss chard and kale and on the back end we have celery so our end walls are a little different this is just if you're looking for a quick option, this is just a two by four with these angle brackets to another two by four. And then more angle brackets up here with the farmer's friend tunnel screws. So one screwed into the metal, one screwed into the wood and burrow strips to tighten up the plastic. And what we're gonna do this year is put wiggle wire right here so that when we get the crazy winter winds, which we always get, well, this, this will stay tight. But last year we had an issue with these blowing open and we would get like cold damage in there. We didn't, we shouldn't have had any happen. Here's tunnel seven. This is all like deep winter salad in here. So it's grown pretty good. Plot seven, this summer we had okra and eggplant here. Now it's like turnips, fennel and some kohlrabi. And then this is a hedgerow, so one of the things that really impacted the layout of our farm was just the natural lay of the land. And this spot here is super sloped. And for whatever reason, the soil is like extremely sandy. So we decided we'll try and have this here. Keep some beneficials, host some wildlife. And the elderberries we harvest and take to market. Over in this spot, we have things like pak choy, cabbages. They can handle the cold real well. so leave them out here this is tunnel six so in here this summer we had peppers and the year before that we had sun gold tomatoes in here right now kale arugula celery and this kale that we started growing this year this is something customers really like it's called siberian kale nice purple color super cold hardy and has really good flavor one of the things we've learned with kale is to prune any bad leaves while we're harvesting just knock those bad leaves off. And we've noticed better growth. The plant's able to focus its energy on new leaves and not trying to fix old damaged ones. Everything in our tunnels is drip irrigation. And then if we need overhead irrigation in our tunnels, we made little misters that will run down the middle or just ones that shoot to one bed or two beds. So this is plot eight. 
and we have two tunnels in this plot. This tunnel here is all carrots. We have a purple haze variety, a bolero variety, and then two beds of sugar snacks again. Sugar snacks has been the best for us, for our soil, and we have a high um, disease pressure of alternaria here, and they're the most alternaria resistant. In between these two tunnels, we have parsley here, and some head lettuce and radicchio there. Uh, next to all of our tunnels, we have a wooded area on our farm, and this whole edge was super thick in pines and I mean th so thick that you couldn't even see through it. I probably cut down about 50 of them and in the edge of the woods here uh, that's where we put our shop up. Yeah we got this through a grant. We were taking tunnels out of production to cure um, onions, cure garlic. We were taking part of our nursery care production. We had our basement full. Uh, we were losing stuff left and right due to humidity and not being able to cure it correctly so we explained all that and put the numbers to it. And I guess they decided to choose us for a grant, which we're grateful for. It's been, it's been awesome. Uh, in here, we're just getting ready to clean this up and organize it, get everything set for next year. But we've got the BCS, the flail mower, the rotary plow, the tiller. This is a PDR attachment. This is like our tractor. We just tie ropes to everything to pull it instead of having a bucket. It's really light on the grass and it's fast to move back and forth. And this is how we cured the garlic. Just two two by fours with all the garlic plants in there put together and screwed together to hold them tight. And the foliage dries out and like curls over the wood so it holds it up there. And then these pallet shelves, I built five of them and they were all on this side and they were just full of onions. like stacked up to the top and every shelf that we owned was in here too full of onions and then we had a big fan in here and pretty much just left the fan right here in case it rained and just left it going it would angle it up angle it to the left or right try and keep a good airflow going and it worked out really well as far as for curing the the shops in a pretty good location everywhere i've been clearing trees and shoveling out wood chips to like make a road. This is a nursery tunnel. We put it up in 2020. This is really the back half. This is where we plant crops normally. We did cucumbers in here this year and um, slicer tomatoes. And then this is like the little partition we have here. Just leftover plastic from one of the tunnels we ordered. And we just bring this down on both sides and we'll clip them together and keep it shut. So we have a little heater in here in our nursery tunnel. And um, that's how we use the heat, but then we only have to heat 50 feet instead of 100. And we also double cover in here. It's made a big difference. Just a little bit of heat goes a really long way. In the spring and summer, this is full and there's like stuff on the ground and there's get the big fan going, the little fans going for airflow. This is the wash station. It's just a, an old carport. This is our Irrigation controller for all the zones. There's an app with this thing that allows us to run it on our phone. Totes. And we have the uh, wash tanks. Drying table. This is something I just made to wash roots for the winter so we're inside instead of outside. We'll wash those in here. I still have to finish this. So we're gonna wash and bubble roots and then put them on that tray there and pressure wash them, get them nice and clean. So coming out of the wash station um, is our cooler. Build a cooler in the garage. It, it's the first thing we built when we moved here um, because where we were, we learned how valuable cold storage was and especially if you didn't have it. Just built this wall and insulated everything else. And there was a window there already. So I just put the AC unit in there. Uh, cool bot. Works pretty good. It's 37 degrees in here. And Fridays before market, this thing's like packed. So I built it bigger initially, which felt stupid, but it makes a lot of sense now. This is our like to do board where the, you know, employees come and Tori puts down what to do and 
everything. We have a map of everything, so when we say like plot six or seven, everybody knows. Over here is plot 11. It's, as far as winter goes, it's really shaded and cold, so it's really just full of salad and when we need it, we'll harvest it. It's not really gonna grow much. Up in the front yard in front of these uh, tunnels and under the trees is what we call the tree plots. They're, they're pretty rough. They, you know, they're shaded a lot. They get a lot of wind because it's just where they are. So in the summer, it's great for greens and like early summer spinach grows really well under there. So in this tunnel we have, it's all spinach. This is all Thanksgiving salad and salad for restaurants that we supply. All right, that pretty much sums up the tour. We also lease some more land at Raising Roots Farm in Hickory. It's about four miles away. We have like 40 beds there. And what that really does for us is it allows us to take like all the onions and garlic and potatoes and some of these longer term things in the summer and take that pressure off of our land and put it there. And then we can go through more fast crops here. So it really increases our overall production. If you'd like to follow any more of our farm, you can find us on um, Instagram, uh, Honey Tree Farm NC, Facebook the same, uh, TikTok the same, and we also have a YouTube channel as well. If anybody's interested in the story or more videos of what we did while we were building the farm up, those are all there to check out. And if you're a customer in this area, the Charlotte, North Carolina area, or Hickory, North Carolina area, you can check out our website, honeytreefarmnc.com. And Tori built an online store there by herself, and you can read bios, look at videos, all that stuff. Thanks for watching. <laughs>